Hey, welcome back if you're a subscriber to the channel. If if not, and I suspect you're probably not because this is way off topic from my normal material. Uh, this video is going to be about my experience with the Mohs surgery. Uh, and you can see the scar on my face here. So this is not medical advice. This is not telling you what to do. This is just kind of a chronicle of my experience, which you may find helpful. So let's get to it. I'm going to start off with the before part. Um, meaning like prior pictures uh, leading up to and the years up to and like, hey, it was on your face. How'd you miss that? I'll talk about the biopsy part, the exam and biopsy, then the actual surgery, and then I'll do post-surgery, including um, some pictures uh, of the wound healing up. So let's begin. Um, right now, it is December of 2021. We're going to roll the clock back to uh, 2017, though. And I'm going to show you a couple of pictures from 2017. And I've got them on the computer screen here. I'm looking at them. Uh, so I'll pull them up here and, and put them in the corner. Um, and you can see uh, the picture shown here. You sort of can't see it. You sort of can, right? Very, very minor and very, very dependent upon the lighting. So fast forward to 2018. So in 2018, it became, I think, more apparent. But still, at the time, it's not something that, frankly, really caught my eye. I mean, I'm getting old. I'm in my late 40s, and, you know, you're just getting old, right? And um, so it just didn't catch my attention, and it really wasn't visible in most pictures. And really looking in the mirror straight on, even with good lighting in the bathroom, wasn't that visible. Uh, so this is all, you know, Monday morning quarterbacking, going back to these old pictures. So finally, in 2000. 19 you can see it became visible but still wasn't registering with me as like a problem um, but then in october of 2021 i had a professional photo taken for work and that's when i was like oh what's that so that's what got this ball rolling so i made a dermatology uh dermatologist appointment and went in to get my face and there were two other marks on my shoulder um checked out shoulder was fine but um, she said, well, the face doesn't, uh, you know, we should biopsy that. So they did. So what was that experience like? It was pretty simple. Uh, they, you feel a little poke in the face. And, uh, of course, I closed my eye, right, because they're, like, right here up in your business. And um, you feel poke, and that's them numbing it. Well, they cleaned it, everything first. And then they just, and off it comes. Like, it, it was 10, 15 seconds I mean, it was very, very quick. Um, and then they just, they put a little, um, some kind of cream to keep it from bleeding. Uh, it was like Vaseline, I think, on it. And uh, off you go. So, like, it never bled or anything. And, of course, you keep Vaseline on it for a couple of days, put a little dot band-aid on it. Not, not a big deal. So, they call back a week later, say, hey, it's basal cell carcinoma, and you need Mohs surgery. So, we got that all scheduled. And so fast forward, this is probably now like six weeks after the biopsy was my surgery. Um, so the day of the surgery, um, and this is where I guess you'll, I'll get it, it'll, you'll see it kind of a gross picture, but um, the first thing they have to do is like prep you. So there's a lot of numbing right around the area of the spot. So you feel the pokes and pricks and everything a little bit, and then eventually it becomes numb. Nothing hurts. You just, you know, they're poking your face with a needle. So who likes that? Um, and by the way, it's not the doctor doing this. This is the nurse or surgical tech kind of like prepping things. So she gets all that done and uh, the doctor rolls in and is like, and done, right? He is in and out of there in like five minutes cutting around it. So now here's the girl's picture I'll, I'll put up. Um, so it's basically just a big hole cut in your face. So they cut that, and then they do have to carterize it to keep it from bleeding. Um, so that's gross. You know, it's like burnt toast. It's really disgusting. But, you know, they got to do it. So they do that, and then they send you out to the waiting room while they check what they call the margins. So the margins apparently are the picture like, you know, the three-dimensional shape they just cut out of your face, and they kind of like map it or whatever. And then they check the, I call it like the perimeter not just the perimeter of the circle, but also in you know the depth of the cut they made and look for cancer. Now, a week or two after the surgery, I looked at my paperwork and it's like nothing found. It's like, what? Why did, you know, why did I have this done? Uh, but 
you got to kind of think through that nothing found on the margins, right? They're not examining during that one hour period you're in the waiting room with a pressure bandage over your face. Um, they're not examining the entire sample because they don't care about the entire sample. They care, you know, did the surgeon, you know, he kind of like did his, based on his experience, did he cut deep enough to get it all in one shot? If he didn't, of course, they got to repeat this process until they get it all. Um, and of course, if you wait a really long time, you know, you might have other issues. I've read an article or I think it was a study uh, saying that these things can metast metastasize, might not be saying that right, which basically means it like infects other parts of your body and then you're screwed. Um, between like one year and 45 years. So apparently some people probably live out the rest of their natural lives and this never go, basal cell never goes any further. So anyway, back to the surgery. So you got this big hole in your face. They call you back in. They say, hey, margins are good. Let's close you up. So to do that, they have to refresh the numbing. And I'm scrolling through some pictures here. Um, they have to refresh the numbing and then they have to go up further because what they're trying to do is make a, if there is a scar, they're trying to like make it follow the flow of your face. And then I guess they also have to like bring the skin in evenly. They can't just like pinch this hole shut or like you can see what it's doing to my skin there. So, um, so that's part of what he's like. He's kind of like, he looked, I, I saw him do it. He's like, you know, I like try to I to like look at my face. Oh, what would look right? So they, they numb you a lot more. And by the way, the numbing, when they finally close you up, that I thought was worse than the initial numbing uh, because it's a larger area and they started working up toward my eye. And I just didn't like that. You know, you can feel the poke and it was a lot of pokes to get that whole area properly numbed. But the surgical tech, I call her, I don't know, if, nurse or surgical tech, whatever she was, she did a great job. And um, by the way, you spend most of your time with her, him or her, not with the surgeon. Um in the prep and, and close up part. So they do that or she did that. And then um, the doctor rolls in and like I said, he does this like iron it up and then he does a little more cut and then, da, 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 da. then there's a couple of internal stitches right where the hole was. And then um, surface stitches, as you can see in the picture here uh, to close up the wound. Uh, they do uh, more carterizing before they do stitching, so it's like stinky and gross and everything. But they got to do it or else you're like bleeding or whatever. And they said I was a bleeder, uh, so I don't even want to know what it must have looked like while they were cutting me. Um, so anyway, back on topic here. So this is what I looked like, one, uh, my face looked like one day after surgery. You can see the stitches. There's about 12 stitches there. And that um, bloodline, that was just like some dried up blood. The stitch line is uh, a little more uh, uh, vertical in... in uh, in its orientation um, and you can see the top of it there too so then three days after surgery this is what I look like um, and again you can see the uh, this is actually Vaseline they tell you to put over the wound um, and then eight days after this is what I look like uh, you can see of course the stitches were just removed uh, they removed the stitches I think it was seven days you know a w one week later they removed the stitches and then 11 days after, this is what it looked like. And now I'll get a little closer. You can see that's what it looks like today. And I'm five weeks out. So that was my experience. Um, it wasn't that bad uh, overall. Um, it's definitely not something I would wait on. If you've got a weird looking mark, don't web in D it or Google or Healthline or whatever. Just go to the dermatologist and get it checked out. Um, so of course I've got a, a follow up now. I'll follow up regularly from now on. Oh, there is a part I skipped after I had my initial exam of just the face and the shoulder and they sent me home. I'm at home thinking, Oh my gosh, what, a, what else is on my body? Like I didn't get a full body exam. I just went for a very specific reason. Um, so I skipped on another appointment for a full body exam prior to the surgery to make sure like there was nothing else going on and there, there wasn't. So that, that was good. Uh, but I will have annual checkups um, from now on. And um, yeah, that's just how it's going to go. So anyway, if you have any questions, post them in the comments. I'll answer what I can. But again, I'll answer what I can based on my experience. I'm not giving medical advice. Um, don't try to email me your picture. You know, none of that, that stuff. Just trying to share my experience. Because I think it will be, some people will find it helpful. 
um, and maybe even comforting <laughs> in a certain way uh, to know that this isn't really something to be afraid of or freak out. Like I was even freaked out, like, um, cause in my left eye, I'm off on a tangent now. You can turn off the video if you're not listening to, uh, interest in that. But my left eye has always had, I guess, poor drainage. So more like pressure and watery. And I'm like, oh my gosh, uh, you know, the cancer has spread to my eye and my tear ducts are infected. And I had all kinds of weird things rolling around in my head in the days and weeks leading up to surgery. Um, but it was all just needless worry. Um, get it taken care of. That's, that's, uh, that's, uh, what I did. And that's probably the best thing for most people to do, but, uh, that's as close as I'll get to medical advice or giving advice here. So post any questions about, um, my experience in the comments and thanks for watching.